That was a giveaway, so it's back at Morris's foot. Carr played into space, and there might be a chance for Chesterfield's Hebbard here, and Trevor Hebbard has got another one for Chesterfield! What a start! Liverpool's defence sprung again, and the team that got four at Anfield has got another one now against Liverpool. Just to remind you, Chesterfield are leading 5-4 on aggregate over the two ties. Oh, lovely play by McManaman, skipping past Carr. He's got such good balance for a tall lad. Marsh's knock-in, met by Rush, and there might be a chance here, and this is Liverpool's equaliser, and it's Don Hutchison. That really was what Liverpool needed, and Don Hutchison gets his fourth goal in five games. Well, then it really broke down badly for them, and there might be a chance now as Redknapp goes on, and the keeper wasn't sure whether to come or not, and Liverpool are in front for the first time in the tie and it's Jamie Redknapp who's exploited some sloppy work in midfield by Chesterfield. Here comes Rosenthal, and if he gets through here, he might get a third. Ronnie Rosenthal, and it's swept into the net by Mark Walters. Liverpool have a third. It's a good spell again for Liverpool now. Chesterfield just on the rack a bit at the moment, and they can finish it off. Rush, surely! Ian Rush, 4-1, and now Liverpool know that they're on the way into the next round for certain. I'm sure Cowens isn't going to shoot from this distance. Testing the goalkeeper, and there's a goal! Who else but Alan Shearer? Less than ten minutes gone, and the man of the moment silenced in the Huddersfield fans. Hendry again, players to aim for. One is Shearer, coming on late on Dyson, wins the header cleanly. Not a good clean clearance though to Whitley! Slack defending by Huddersfield Town. And class finishing from Roy Wegley, but again it was Alan Shearer causing the problems in the air. Ireland has the pace to go around Brown. He's inside the 18-yard box. Brown's going to have to be careful. Misses out Roberts and a goal for Huddersfield. Or is it just a consolation or is it going to bring them back into the game? Harsley does well to shake off Shearer. Roberts putting Miranda under a bit of pressure. It has to go back to Bobby Mims. Oh, what a mistake by the Blackburn goalkeeper. Well, he could have played the ball anywhere, but it came off the shins of Ewan Roberts. And from being two goals behind, Huddersfield Town are back in the game. Suddenly, it's just Yorkshire voice has been heard around Ewood Park. Huddersfield going in search of a third. Island, and they've got the third. Well, would you believe it? Two goals within a minute. Simon Island celebrating with the fans. New York has little support in attack, surprisingly. Only Wilcox wide. Cross in, Shearer! Well, he's only done two things all night, but he's certainly rescued Blackford Roman. Shearer. Adrenaline's pumping. This is it, possibly the last chance for New York, and he scores! John Walk now, beautiful ball over the top for Kawamia. Kawamia slides it across. Oh, and it's there! Johnson, Gavin Johnson. Kawamia, the most uh, forward Ipswich player at the moment, a chance for Kawamia. Oh, and he needed no invitations for that. Thompson's cross. This is Williams. Leaves it to Stockwell. Goddard. Oh, what a good ball to Dazelle. Chance for Kawamia. And he scored! Thompson. Got Johnson to his left. Plays the ball across and it's gone over to John Walk. That's a good ball in by Walk and there it is! Chris Kawamia's hat trick. Sheffield Wednesday playing in yellow from left to right at the Victoria ground against Hartlepool and they got off to the best possible start, a goal in the opening minute scored by Mark Bright who's in terrific form at the moment, that's his 
third goal in four games. So Wednesday off to a great start and things got better for them in the second half, just before the hour in fact. Nigel Worthington's free kick floated in and it's another goal for the defender turned striker Paul Warhurst and that's his fifth goal since being converted last month to a striker. Hartlepool then struck twice to bring themselves back into the tie. Now that in the opinion of referee Paul Harrison wasn't a foul by Carlton Palmer though the fans roared for a penalty. But now, was that a push by Carlton Palmer on Brian Honour? The referee said it was. Now watch Palmer's reaction. Now whatever he thought of the decision, an experienced England player ought to know better than that. And Palmer perhaps a little fortunate here not to suffer serious retribution from the referee. However, the result of it all was a penalty kick and a familiar face here to fans of Hull and Barnsley. It's Andy Saville taking the penalty and taking it very coolly as well for Hartlepool bringing them a measure of respect in the tie. And in the final minute, Hartlepool struck once again. Again, Saville involved in the area, and the ball forced home by Lenny John Rose, the former Blackburn player, to make the final score at the Victoria ground. 2-2 on the night, 5-2 in the aggregate deficit. Wednesday, of course, won 3-0 in the first game. Uh, Bolton grabbed one or two brownie points by winning at Wimbledon. Unfortunately, Tony Phyllis Kirk's goal wasn't enough. Not a lot uh, gone Bolton's way in recent weeks, and that could herald a change of fortune. Here's the corner now. Quinn again, the marking was slack, and it's an own goal. Quinn turned it back across, and it ricocheted into the net to give Manchester City the lead. Off Madison, and that's... A disastrous out goal. Hardeman's corner now. A packed and congested area, particularly around the six-yard box. Taylor's making circling runs. Didn't get to him. And the flick, and a goal! Taylor's turning it! Quote furious. Mr. Rovers are level. Reed. Now has he found White here? He has. Simpson. Quinn just staying on side. Again, that's intelligent distribution by Simpson. Holden. Can he finish it now? Yes. Holden with a second goal for Manchester City. And that surely now has secured their place in the next round. Some very, very disconsolate Crystal Rovers figures out there. Dejection for them, elation for Tony Coton and Manchester City. Rick Holden, who scored his first goal in City's colours on Saturday, has done it again here. Deceiving Parkin, and it flies in off the post. Kevin Campbell took matters into his own hands in scoring a brilliant solo goal at the Den. Lee Dixon wasted Campbell's good work, putting through his own goal, forcing the Gunners into extra time and ultimately into the dreaded shootout. Good at the back pedalling. Kelly now falling well for Kelly. Superbly finished by David Kelly, and it's Newcastle who take the lead. First blood to Newcastle. And the whole good enders really getting behind their team now. Into the middle for Wilkinson. 1 1, Wilkinson. He was too quick for the Newcastle defence then, and now the whole good end erupts. Howie. Did well to find Beresford, and was a long way forward considering they were under pressure. Good running by Lee Clark. Kelly wants it ahead of him. Kelly was unmarked. They picked up now, and it was an awkward bounce. And Peacock and wide for Quinn, and there for O'Brien. What a goal from Liam O'Brien! That's a superb strike. Newcastle take the lead again 
O'Brien. Cut out by O'Brien, the hero, but now Gittins can, well, look for Wilkinson, but it didn't reach him. Now he made sure. The ball through to Robert Lee. And Lee Clark, no offside. Kelly in the middle. Kelly, it's all over now for Middlesbrough, surely. Scarborough wiped the floor with Coventry in the last quarter of a pulsating cup tie. Tommy Mooney got the first of three tremendous goals. Then in the last minute of normal time, they levelled the match with a second. There was total panic in the city defence, and Darren Foreman punished them by getting on the end of the loose ball. Jubilation all round, and manager Ray McHale urged his side to go for a winner, even though extra time looked on the cards. Then three minutes into injury time, their pressure paid off. Lee Hurst headed them into the third round. The celebrations began with the final whistle, and there was no way back for Coventry. Now the town's expecting big things. Crosby. Being encouraged by the Forest bench to really go at the fullback here. Finds Clark, it's a good ball. Now Keane. Crosby again. Got a shout there from Kingsley Black. And it's a goal. Good work by Nottingham Forest. And they take the lead here. With almost 20 minutes gone. Yes, good ball by Crosby. Superb dummy by Nigel Clough. On to Kingsley Black. I just wonder what Neil Edwards was doing there. Maybe he was unsighted, but he was certainly late going down. And uh, Morris leading 1-0 here, but not really playing very convincingly. And Kevin Francis suddenly into space here. Good goalkeeping. Beaumont straight back in. Oh, that's a good goal. That is an excellent finish. And Stockport are level on the night. Got themselves in a real mess there, Nottingham Forest. They did indeed, actually. It was a very good ball played through to our Kev, who really made a pig's ear of it, as he's been doing most of the night. But Beaumont following up has knocked a really good goal in. And it's now made it a very interesting evening. The obvious problem here is lurking there in the number nine jersey. At six feet seven, he can reach out and touch the crossbar with his head almost, and wins the header, and it's almost a goal. Ward can't believe that that was kept out. Sheffield with a kind of embarrassed smile almost. Oh, good header this by Big Kev again, and uh, Stevie Chettle really, by instinct, keeps that out. Only because part of the manager just uh, having a sly drag there in the manager's dugout. Now, you wouldn't have thought maybe Neil Edwards would disagree that this was the best position for Pierce to hit a left footer. But you never know. I rather suspect Clough will take this one, though. Maybe not. No. Oh, it's an own goal. And can you believe that Stockport's night has ended in misery like that? Gannon deflecting the free kick from Stuart Pearce into his own net. What a cruel way for Stockport's fine performance to end. One of Stuart Pearce's worst ever free kicks. And it gets turned in by uh, Jim Gannon. Manchester United were always the better side, but they did have a few scares along the way. Andy Kennedy racing onto a Matt Edwards through ball, and the world's number one goalkeeper Peter Schmeichel denying him, and then Clive Walker. United did take the lead within the first 15 minutes. Brian Robson's through ball, McClare's glancing header, and Mark Hughes, well, only he would finish like that. McClare's looping header, and Hughes reacting the quickest and the most acrobatically too. So we'll slow play down for a second or two. He finds Bigger on the far side. Bigger really does spring high for a little winger. Another short man, Cotty. Unsworth. Horn, back to Beagree. Good turn from Beagree. Good cross as well. That's right. And that's his first goal in senior football for Everton. Beagree's corner. Mercer stays in his line. Long clearance. Only Hazel up there, though. 
Right out on side. He's beaten the offside track. That could be a penalty, but Cotty scores. Now, what is the referee going to give here? Well, he has to send Mercer off if he's given a penalty in that situation. A bizarre situation, really. He should have allowed the goal. He blew his whistle possibly too early. Referee. And Mercer goes off. Well, a sad evening. Maybe you ask, should he have stayed on the field? But he certainly took a ride out, out of the game. To be Nicky Law who's going to go in goal the centre half he's certainly got the height Tony Cotty is going to be the first man to test the standing keeper from the penalty spot well for the next 15 minutes or so the standing keeper is going to have a backing his first job is going to face a penalty from Cotty now Cotty scored from free play and Cotty scores the penalty well that you have to say is justice drops for Fazika a lack of concentration from the polar. Kenny helps him out. Back to Vizika. His mind's on the job this time. Oh, a nutmeg in the area. He's going to have a shot at the keeper. Draws the goalkeeper. And that's a second goal for Paul Rideout. Deagree inside. He likes to shoot from here. He tries to shot. Oh, what a save. Well, that's going to go in the family album of the goalkeeper. I don't think Billy Mercer could have done better than that before he got sent off. A good, strong, dipping shot from Peter Beagree. And just underneath the crossbar, a competent save from Nicky Law. Oh, I'm really battling so hard and giving Norwich a few problems. It goes sudden. <laughs> sudden. Suddenly scores. Out of the blue, literally. And it looked as if O'Hanlon should have stopped that one. That was a powerful header by the... Young defender, if you like, brought forward especially for this game, and at last it's the breakthrough. Newman. Newman in again. Robbins nicely down to Crook, waiting for the support from Culverhouse. What about this cross? Sutton! Great play from Norwich City. Chris Sutton again. And that's the end of Carlisle United. West Ham were unbeaten in 10 games up until tonight, and in fairness, they created enough chances to at least have troubled the scorers. Julian Dix was the man of the match. His volley brilliantly tipped over by Dean Grain Goose. But then Steve Walters took a grip on the edge of the West Ham penalty area. His industry, clever little through ball, and Tony Naylor squeezed the ball under Ludo McCloscoe. Cresty Road sensed a night to remember, and the trumpet sounded. Craig Hicknett and Tony Naylor began and finished the move that made it two. It really summed up everything that's good about crew. Naylor full of unselfish running all night and Hicknett arriving up alongside him right on cue to lash in the goal that took them into the next round. While West Ham were being involved in one of the shocks of the round away at crew, they left their ground vacated for Berry to do very much the same. Defeating Charlton, Charlton riding high second in the first division, Berry not in the best of form at the moment. Still try telling that to Kevin Hume and the travelling Berry supporters. 18 minutes from time when he scored. I bet it was a long 18 minute wait for the final whistle. But Berry are into the next round. Derby went down 1 0 in the first leg of Roots Hall, but they were never in the slightest trouble tonight. Paul Kitson put them ahead after just four minutes. In fact, Derby have been threatening to tear teams apart for several weeks. Even when they weren't winning, they still oozed quality, but they did get a lucky break for their second. Dave Martin, an own goal, making it 2-0 to Derby on the night. Now, Marco Gabbiadini is at last starting to live up to that Marco Golo nickname he had a couple of years ago. That was Derby's third. And then it was Paul Kitson again. A lousy back pass, Kitson latching onto it. Derby's fourth. Poor Colin Murphy, the former Derby manager, bringing his South End team back to the baseball ground. He must have wondered what was hitting him. Actually, it was about £10 million worth of talent. Gabbiadini again with Derby's fifth. Now, South End used to have a long pier that was once ripped apart when a boat barged straight through it. Tonight, Derby did a similar sort of demolition job. Paul Simpson put in on the act two for Derby's sick, and there was still ten minutes to go. Then Tommy Johnson rounded off a reasonable night's entertainment at the baseball ground, straight from the corner. No one else touched it. 
Colin Murphy's programme notes should make for interesting reading, but it was seventh heaven for Derby. Stoke City manager Lou Macari was the most disappointed manager in the country when he found he'd drawn Cambridge a few weeks ago. And his worst fears were realised after 36 minutes of the second leg at Victoria Ground tonight. John Fowler opening the scoring for the visitors. Graham Shaw then restored parity and Stoke City would have gone through on the way goals. Had it not been for a late winner from John Francis, the former Burnley striker, heading brilliantly home and sending Cambridge through to the next round. 